there are basically two kinds of people in this world that drive Jeeps. The first kind of people that drive Jeeps are the type of people that like to use the Jeep brand to define themselves. The other kind of people define the Jeep brand with their own character and approach towards life. And how they drive the Jeep. This is kind of hairy. My left tire keeps pinching against the, the hill. There's some roots on the right, left here that are I'm scared of. Whole Jeep's leaning over. We might have some carnage here. But I'm not backing out of this one at this point, so. Crap, I think I'm gonna scratch it. Just a Jeep, right? Scratch nothing. My name is Tommy Danger. It's the only name I got. Aside from the others. I am going to introduce you to my Jeep. This is my Jeep. You see the inside right now. You can't see the outside, but it's there. It's yellow. I bought this thing seven years ago, 2010, I bought it. Bought it in Washington. I'll be right back. I don't think I can make it under this log. So this Jeep has outlived its particular usefulness in my life. For a couple reasons, um, anybody that's been around these Cherokees knows that the back seat is small and hard to get into, especially when you lift it. If you're an adult and you try to get into the back seat of this thing, there's not much dignity in doing so. So I'm going to get it. Jeep that's a little longer. Sorry, uh, this is kind of hairy. Kind of going over a precipice here. So I'm going to pay attention to what I'm doing and I'll be back. So let me tell you a little more about this Jeep. I played with it hard back in Oz, the land of Oz, before I moved here to the greater Gotham area. There's lots of spots to wheel around here, around Gotham. So, it's a good spot to be, for now. It's had a lot of experience. It's um, running a lot of trails in a lot of different places. Um, I never did a lot of customization with the drivetrain. I did the suspension lifts, but it still has, still has open differentials. Stock axles. So it's been a pretty pretty mild build as far as builds go. I got 32 inch tires. This is the fifth set of rubber I've had on it. I've tried a lot of different stuff. I've settled on a pair of uh, a set of BF Goodrich All Terrains um, ATKO. Love them. I don't know that I'll ever go back to a mud terrain on a street vehicle again because of how well these tires do. I don't think the mud terrain is necessary. They sure look cool. But for the road noise and the, how fast they wear and the road manners, I don't think it's worth it. So I'll swap these tires. 
tires over to my Grand Cherokee when I'm done with this. Nothing special, just a Cherokee with a lift kit and some tires, and we have a lot of fun. I made a couple bumpers from it out of um, some old pipe. It used to be a clothesline. Rock what you got, that's what I say. Sometimes, sometimes I say that. That it worked well for me. I hit that tree here a couple years ago. I might have just hit another tree, I hope it didn't bend something. We're good. When I hit that tree a couple years ago, I hit my um, pipe bumper hard enough that it collapsed the frame rail between the rear leaf spring mounts, between the front and rear leaf spring mount on the left spring. So, so I'd say I built my bumpers tough enough if the Jeep is collapsing under them when I hit stuff. So, I'll probably sell those. Put those, put those on Greg's list. See if some other XGA guy out there wants them. And I'll build news bumpers for my Grand Cherokee. Oh boy. What I'm gonna do with this Jeep is take it apart. I'm gonna part it out. Sell all the pieces I don't need on Greg's list. And reuse the front suspension on my 95 Grand Cherokee and um, I'm gonna reuse the wheels and tires I did intend to reuse the transmission but I have a different plan now um, that's that's all I'm gonna reuse from this Jeep and the rest I'm gonna sell and sell for pieces since the body of this is not shape I don't think I can get much if I just sell it outright so I'm gonna keep a few pieces and sell the rest so that's what's gonna happen it's gonna be kind of sad because we've had such a good run but that's what we're gonna do Now I'll give you a little walk around and show you a little more about the Jeep, what we're doing. Um, show you what it's got, what I've done to it, just for fun. Uh, most of it's going to be parted out and sold. And then we'll build another Jeep, so check it out. 1990, like I said, uh, it's got a 4.0 inline 6. Uh, the inline 6 is actually in a high output out of a later model Jeep um, with, the, with the old Phoenix injection um, front bumper custom made 32 inch tires 15 inch dock Jeep wheels off of a off of a later model Cherokee also um, the surface the surface is a Duraback a bedliner type product Duraback is the brand um, it's a polyurethane based um, roll on or spray on depending on what you got mirrors are off a newer Jeep this um, this fender flare I stretched you can see there's a cut in the middle I took two pieces and, and cut them both off past center and then stretched my fender so that my tire wouldn't run I planned to do that on all four but but I kind of give up before I got that far uh, on the back bumper I never never really finished but I got close it's also pipe bumper lights. Those are just those are just from the from the Napa store. Just drilled a hole in the in the tailgate where it would fit 
and um, put some lights on a switch. Uh, worked pretty good. Makes all kinds of light when I'm out playing at night or backing up. Um, homemade rack on top, nothing special. Oh, back here you can see the see that um, this whole corner's kind of collapsed a bit. I hit hit a tree, um, hit a tree and, and bent it. And there's all kinds of folding or rippling going on in the inside here, and, and a little tear around a sheet a weld. You can see the frame rail itself is kinked in two places. Where's the other one? Back here. It's hard to see, but it's kinked there and there. Could be straightened out. I don't want to mess with it. Um, but it's also also encountered a fence post at one point before I had the bumpers on. Hit a fence post right here, a big one, and mashed this whole corner. I beat it back out. Uh, my paint on the top's all flaking off on me. I've had, Paint about seven years old, and um, anyway, getting a little long in the tooth under the hood. Like I said, is a inline four liter six cylinder. I've done a lot of work under here. Um, this block is out of a newer. It's a high output with the, um, stronger bottom end and. A, Apparently the head's supposed to flow a little better on these high outputs also, but but I put the old ignition back or injection system back on it that was stock to this Jeep, so it agree with the computer. And a lot of the vacuum stuff has been removed by me. Um, it's got a high flow water pump. Um, just a lot of little little tweaks. It's got a later model radiator with a gas or with a cap on it. Um, a lot of changes. The transmission is an AX15 five-speed manual. It has a what's called a concentric clut or um, slave cylinder. You can see the bleeder valve there and the and the fluid going in, the uh, hard line going in. There's no shift fork um, or no external slave, which makes them a challenge to fix when they go bad. I've done it a couple times, and you just have to remove the transmission. Fix the slave. Transfer case is a new process 231 stock. Never been into it. Leaks a bit. Uh, makes a little little noise at, at highway speeds, but other than that, it seems to do pretty well. Um, aftermarket um, knockoff Flowmaster muffler does a good job. Nothing fancy. Uh, I built a stole a heat shield off of a Ford Explorer. And, um, and tucked it on there to, to help help with the heat on the driver's or passenger feet. Um, got a couple patches I've done where it was rusty, like there. Underneath the back seat, it was it was rusty, so I put a cut out a piece from another Jeep and, and pop riveted in there. But um, and it was equipped with three 07 to one actual gears, and it also had a. Dana 30 or 35, whatever the rear is. Um, I took those that axle out and I put in this Chrysler. Um, well, what is it? Eight and a quarter Chrysler out of a 1993 Jeep, and the uh, the gear ratio is uh, 356 to one. So I effectively give it a little bit stronger axle and. A little bit lower gears so um, anyway drum brakes stock drum brakes nothing fancy rough country four and a half inch lift rough country four and a half inch springs stock shackles um, little little tiny block there just to level it a bit inch I think block nothing fancy it works great no complaints but under the front end is a uh, uh, factory Dana axle out of a, a different Cherokee with matching gear ratio to the rear. This Jeep came out of a 1990 Limited with ABS, um, which I'm not using. Um, got a reinforced reinforced tie rod there because I kept bending them. A couple pieces of angle iron welded over it. Um, rough country, rough country track bar. Put in there. 
the, the, the track bar that came with the lift was um, kind of fake and it bent on me easily. Uh, rough country rough country springs, four and a half inch lift springs. Got a block in there to help out the bump stop. Uh, quick disconnects. Uh, it was all part of the part of the rough country kit. I've tinkered with a lot of it over over the over the years. I could put heim joints on the end of there because the rough country unit went to pieces on me. But nothing fancy, just a, just a simple lift. Um, short arm. Obviously, if you can tell, I don't know, heavy duty arms that, that put up with a lot and done well, so. The shift lever, you can see, is a bicycle handle grip and a, and a brake, brake handle. That is a hooked up to the throttle, hooked up to the factory cruise control on the throttle body, so. Um, the pipe there is an old, old, um, old tie rod that came off of this Jeep once when I bent it. Um, here in the center, I was in the middle of a project to put an XJ Classic center console in there with some cup holders, but I never got it finished. I got the, the, the piece of body grafted over there with some prop rivets and the new offset handle in, but I never switched out the center console. Auto box phone case hooked onto a rear view mirror arm. Hooked onto a piece of aluminum bent to fit that hole. So I got a phone holder there that's pretty that's pretty secure. Works really good with my outer box case. 80s Mercedes steering wheel that's um, that's welded on to the now it's hard to see. It's welded on to the center of a Jeep wheel. The horn works, horn hooked up. It does all this interior is out of an 84, a red. I have this rack in the back that um, you can see is just bolted to the the unibody with big washers on the back, um, and that allows me to that allows me to store my spare tire and all my gear underneath my subwoofer, um, and still have a good spot to to carry other things and strap them down good. So, <clears throat> also have a, a homemade subwoofer enclosure um, that um, that recesses back into the body. Also up front, I got. Um, speakers in the kick panel. I did that to remove them from the door because the door hinges are cut. The bottom section of the door hinges are cut so I can remove them when I go out playing in the woods. I'm going to start tearing into it soon here, hopefully. Um, and if you look over my shoulder here, you see that white Jeep. That's what all this is going into. So, or all the the good pieces so I'm gonna take the good pieces out of this put them in that and then go have some more fun with a longer Jeep that has not been beat on so hard over the last few years so seems like a good idea right